small myself mr s k kulkarni assistant professor walchand institute of technology sholapur am here to discuss uh, with you uh, on topic optimization techniques and uses in civil engineering learning outcomes of the uh, today's session are uh, students at the end of the session students will be able to explain optimization techniques and their uses in civil engineering let us see introduction dear friends optimization refers to acquiring the best outcome under specific conditions in the field of civil engineering optimization can be executed in each step of a project life cycle such as design construction operation and maintenance so optimization is very important one in civil engineering especially uh, it will reduce cost it will reduce time it will maximize benefits profits structural optimization one of the most commonly used types of optimization is a structural optimization structural optimization aims to find the best arrangement of structures or structural components to achieve certain objectives under prescribed conditions while ignoring the properties of adopted materials so uh, structural optimization is uh, one of the important uh optimization techniques in which the section properties will be uh, used to optimize the uh, the particular structural component so different materials are used in construction steel is there concrete is there and their optimization is very much important so that economy can be observed and also the best possible uh, st uh, structural component can be uh, obtained no objective material is a critical part of civil engineering structures which significantly affects their performance we know this materials are very important concrete based composite materials are most commonly used in buildings and civil engineering infrastructures including plain concrete reinforced concrete prestressed concrete etc so in concrete uh, there are different types of concrete like pcc is there rcc pre stress concrete all these materials uh, are there which are used in civil engineering and these uh, materials are studied properly how the optimization can be done in the uh, civil engineering is decided upon it objectives although some civil engineering structures which contain different types of materials structures that only contain a single type of material are normally considered in terms of structural optimization due to the computational difficulty when considering material distribution of structures now uh, in the first case we can see a priori decision maker selects preferences and optimize uh, or optimizes to find the optimal solution in the first case and in second case a prior post priori a model optimized to find uh, pre uh, pre optimal solution and decision maker chooses most desirable one now types structural optimization can be divided into following four categories which are those size optimization which is known as sizing optimization also which treats the cross sectional areas of the structures or structural members as design variables shape optimization also known as configuration optimization which treats the nodal coordinates of structures as the design variables and other two are topology optimization which focuses on how nodes or joints are connected and supported aiming to delete unnecessary unnecessary structural members to achieve the optimal design and multi objective optimization simultaneously consists two or more of the above optimization objectives for better optimization results an optimization involving size shape and topology at the same time is known as uh, as is also known as layout optimization so these are the uh, four 
important uh, structural optimization types which are useful and frequently used. Uses One of the principal objectives of structural optimization is minimizing the total cost of the structure. What is the principal objective of structural optimization? To minimize the total cost, right? So that structure is economical one. In construction projects, a lower cost is always desirable on the premise of satisfying the requirements of structural performance. So, structural performance should be good and the cost should be minimum. This is desirable. Many studies have been reported to reduce the total cost by minimizing the total weight of the material, total weight of the structure. Now, there are different uh, optimization uh, objectives and de their description is given here. For example, cost minimization is the objective and what is uh, the uh, importance of cost minimization or significance of cost minimization is optimization for minimizing the total cost of civil engineering structures, which is usually achieved by reducing structure weight or volume. So, this is called cost minimization, uh, this is cost minimization. Now, structural performance improvement, one more objective of optimization under which optimization for improving certain properties of the civil engineering structures in order to adopt functional requirements is done. Now third one, environmental impact minimization, third objective of optimization and optimization uh, uh, under this optimization for reducing the environmental impacts of civil engineering structures such as greenhouse gas emission and energy consumption. So, this is done under environmental impact minimization and one more objective, multi objective of this uh, optimization and under which optimization considering more than one of the above objectives. So, these are the objectives of uh, optimization and their uh, description. Now, optimization integer programming models. Now, integer programming models arise in particularly every area of application of mathematical programming. So, here we can see one of the linear programming used for optimization. Now, what is linear integer programming? This problem, just now we have seen this particular problem is called the linear integer programming problem. It is said to be a mixed integer program when some but not all variables are restricted to be integer and is called a pure integer program when all decision variables must be integers. If the constraints are of a network nature, then an integer solution can be obtained by ignoring the integrity restrictions and solving the resulting linear program. And branch and bound technique is uh, the technique essentially it is a strategy of divide and conquer and this branch and bound techniques is used under linear programming and linear programming uh, is most of the time uh, is used for scheduling of the project. It is very much useful in scheduling of the project. Now how this scheduling is done? The entire class of problems referred to as sequencing, scheduling or and routing are inherently integer programs. Consider the example of scheduling of students, faculty and classrooms in such a way that the number of students who cannot take their first choice of classes is minimized. There are constraints on the number and size of classrooms available at any one time. The availability of faculty members at particular time and the preferences of the students for particular schedules. So, these are the constraints. Clearly then the ith student is scheduled for the jth class during the nth time period or not. Hence such a variable is either 0 or 1. Other examples of this class of problem include line balancing, critical path scheduling with resource constraints and ve vehicle dispatching. So, these are, these are the uh, uses of linear programming. Dynamic programming is one more type. 
is an it is an optimization method which was developed in 1950 by Richard Bellman and it is used to solve the multi stage optimization problem in which dynamic means reference to time and programming means planning or tabulation it is used in equipment replacement material transportation and work problem etc so dynamic uh, programming is used in cases of uh, problems with dealing with equipment replacement material transportation and work problems okay and it consists of three steps for solving a problem which are those the given problem is divided into sub problems as same as divide and concur rule however dynamic programming is used when the sub problems are not independent of each other but they are interrelated that is they are also called as overlapping problems to avoid this type of recomputation of overlapping sub problem a table is created in which whenever a sub problem is solved then its solution will be stored in the table so that in future its solution can be reused the solution of the sub problem is combined in manner to obtain the optimal solution of the given problem so students let us stop a while here here are few questions for you give their answers state whether following assertions are true or false these are the two assertions write your answers these are the answers first one is false second one is true hope you are written the correct answers these are the references for today's session thank you